Hello. I think we're live now. I think so. Um, if not, <laughs> if not, this is going to be really interesting. We're talking to ourselves. <laughs> right. So um, I'm Bahia Overton. And I'm Dr. Joy DeGroo. And we're actually <laughs> writing to you. Or <laughs> we're not writing. We're talking to you. We're in an interesting space here. <laughs> so, okay. um, anyway. Um, we uh oh good someone gave us a thumbs up so that means cool that so you can hear us, on so we know that we're not just talk to ourselves thank okay. you so much for please that. um let us know if you can't hear us for any reason there's some country music going on <laughs> in the background we have no and, control of the environment you know right there's now. stuff happening here but just, <laughs> <laughs> just bear not with the us. optimal i mean you know. i mean okay so, like life you know like life that's right so like okay so we're here to talk about two things and not to talk about one of those things. <laughs> That's right. We're here to talk about why we're not talking. Why about we're not it. talking about it? About one. Okay. The, the the thing that we're not talking about is Kanye West. That's correct. Doctor Joy here has been approached, and me also in some situations to talk about what we think about Kanye West and his comments, and our response, both of us, has been it's irrelevant. It's it's a non. It's just not even a question. I wouldn't, you know, even. I mean, it's like someone wanting to talk to him about astrophysics. It's just, why? <laughs> why Why are we doing this? What What reason do we have? What reason Stop in the world? The it's sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was, I was feeling a little some kind of way yeah, about it. But just lift, lift your hands when you start feeling like Just it. simply because I think, you know, we, we, we give attention to things. And mm -hmm. we have to have a little bit more restraint around mm -hmm. our engagement on yeah. social media and yeah. what we get out there. We get distracted. Mm -hmm. And so we don't deal with the real stuff. Yeah. So let's yeah. see what the real stuff. Someone said we look like twins. Um, Yvonne or Yvonne, we do not look like twins. I am the younger, browner version. <laughs> Thank you very much. Whatever. You know. Anywho, but I'd like to say that our intelligence yes. matches That's up pretty true. nicely. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So the reason, I like her. I like her too. Yeah. We like each other. But she birthed me, so I kind of have true. to like her. No, not, well, I guess not true. Not really. I don't have to like her. Anyway, we're, we digress. We digress. The, the, the point is, we're not going to talk about situations that are not going to improve our collective situation. And what I mean by our collective situation is, uh, as a people, as a community, um, we need to be thinking about real changes that exactly. need to be made within our own control. We're not going to be able to control what other crazy people do. Right. But we are definitely not going to be distracted by the folks who are not helping us move forward. Correct. And in that, with that being said, there's so many things going on right now that I think all of us need to start paying attention to, um, and which is part of the focus of the conference. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, we, so the conference, um, for any of you who are wondering, uh, we're having our third conference, the Be the Healing Conference. It's going to be in Princeton, New Jersey um, um, in June, June 23rd, I think, to the 22nd to the 24th. 22nd, 24th. Yeah. And um, the kind of tagline to that is learn, connect, and serve. Um, that's kind of been the foundation upon which um, – my whole life, uh, my family has been kind of saying, sure. you seek to understand, and when you, once you understand, you do, sure. and you serve other people. You serve your community. You serve humanity. And so this is <clears throat> going to be a wonderful opportunity for people who um, want to work with their families, want to work with their um, clients, uh, students, um, patients. And, and a, real, a real essential part of this, I think, is the fact that um, I was talking to a, a number of people. Um, I was at Sundance recently, and mm -hmm. that's a whole other conversation that we are also going to enter in on, and that is the the role of virtual reality and artificial intelligence moving forward that is happening all around us and we're not involved in. Um, mm -hmm. So that's another conversation, but I'm definitely going to fold it into mm -hmm. um folded into the, the conference. The other piece that is striking me about the necessity of our coming together, not even necessarily for my conference, but please do that. The, the reason is, is I think that we are experiencing a resurgence of uh, hostility, mm -hmm. if you will, lack of a better word. And that hostility is something that I'm not unfamiliar with. I mean, I grew up uh, kind of hearing my parents coming from the South, trying to escape Jim Crow. You know, I, I went through the whole, um, you know, Watts riots growing up in South Central. And, you know, so I was kind of aware of that level of hostility. Unfortunately, though, a lot of people now who are, who are engaging with students and, and youth and young adults, um, 
what Generation Z or whichever, whatever letter <laughs> we're on at this point, I think that they grew up with We Are the World. Yeah. And so as a result of that, there's a whole lot of really great things going on, but they have no tools to navigate the level of hostility or that's like showing up. The ones that have not been given We Are the World have been given The World is Yours. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The country is yours. The world is yours. Right. And so when we start talking about, um, you know, uh, inclusivity and equity and um, fully engaging all voices uh, at the table, then it becomes a threat to them. Exactly. And so we have to prepare our children for the fact that that is actually, you know, you know, some people are told we are the world and they're completely unprepared to navigate it. And other people are told the world is yours, yours and you don't have to give anything yeah. to anybody else. Right. Um, which is problematic. Both of them are problematic, especially when they meet. Yeah, and, we, and I think we also have to, to take a look at the fact that as we move forward, we're trying to build community in the midst of the disintegration of right. community. We're looking at gentrif gentrification being alive and well all over the country and really starting to try to learn how to strategize how do we regain a sense of connection to people? Because it's affecting people's, people's health, mental health, um, and, and even the trajectory of our sense of hope. And so, you know, these are things that, these are the conversations I want to talk about. Yeah, I want to sure. talk about real stuff. Right. Because there's real stuff happening, you know. Right, and right, so right. I think that, you know, I don't really have time to kind of <laughs> trivial stuff. I just, I can't do it. Well, I think <laughs> that, know? I think this is, this is an aside. My father once told me this interesting story. And if you know my father, Henry Cross, um, you would know that he tells all kinds of weird stories. That is but right. I did get this lesson from one of his interesting stories. And what he told me was that one of my aunts, my aunt Freddie, that she has a, had a sister who liked to wear really, really short skirts. And he was like, what's up with this chick and her short skirts? And uh, my aunt's response not to be callous, what was, did you notice she don't have any titties? <laughs> my dad said, uh, no, I've never noticed that. And he said, uh, because it's a distraction. The short skirts have distracted you from right. recognizing exactly. that she has no chest. Now, that's a strange story. That is a told. strange story. However, I however, 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 okay. however, what it taught me is that people who want to, to direct your attention elsewhere mm -hmm. will create distractions mm -hmm. for you. Exactly. It's not a short skirt. It's Kanye West in this situation. Right. And what I'm saying is, the world ain't got no titties. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? What? I'm what I'm sorry. saying is, and we got to stay focused <laughs> on what we need to be. Let's see the truth. truth. Stay focused. See the stay truth. Get you the black together. chance so, of the world. And here's the other thing that, I, that I've been just kind of noting. <laughs> and that is the level of really bizarre paranoia as it relates to, you know, when we start looking at build, build a wall, you know, we got to build a wall. We've got, you know, uh, you look at Brexit mm. and these are behaviors that we don't usually use the P word pathology. This is pathology. Oh, I thought you were this is a level, that, not that, that. <laughs> the pathology word, yeah. meaning that you have this kind of uh, irrational fear mm -hmm. and that irrational fear leads to the scapegoating. Oh, yeah. You know, like yeah. you're talking, so I was talking to a group of people around um, the fact that when people invite me to speak, I always say, are you sure? <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not gonna hold your hand. I'm not gonna take care of Miss Ann. I'm none of that. I'm not, I'm not doing all that. I don't have time, you know, and there's this kind of over, overarching kind of uh, doom that, that these folks have around, God, there's just too many of you people. You know, yeah. and the truth of the world, the word is uh, here that we have to understand that there's a little man behind the curtain yep. and we can see it. Exactly. Everybody can see the little man behind the curtain. Behind the great and powerful That's wizard right. is a little man. And the majority of the, we're not minorities. We're the majority, majority yes. which is the problem. Right. That's the concern. And again, uh, uh, there's a generation of folks around us that are rational and sane. Mm -hmm. Our children say, well, you know, look, look at the world, the world. Right. But for some people, we represent the threat. And so therefore, we have to um, destroy your equilibrium, make right. you feel that, that, that you're not okay. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, the fact that you're talking about all these things, you, if you're telling us that there are, you know, 7.6 you know, billion, billion people on the planet, and um, I'm the minority and shrinking. Right. Uh, you know, you're making me upset. You're, you're making me upset and I'm going to have to. You, so, so we're going to have to do something about her because she's making me upset. Right. And I'm going, you know how many people you've upset? 
on the destroyed, planet and destroyed, and obliterated, and raped, and you know. Right. I digress. So hey, we, digress. we digress. But the point is this. The point is, is that our encouragement in this moment is two things. One, if you're not doing something, get active into, in doing something. That's right. And try to find what's going to work. The, the majority of programs and systems, what they do is they consistently make decisions that impact you and your families and your communities, um, completely with you not at the table for designing those um, interventions or strategies or policies. You're not at the table, you can't add a voice. And sometimes we get really, really stuck in our right on mo moments or like we're right on, that we are <laughs> unable to get to those tables. And we don't wanna cut, we, we, I'm not suggesting we assimilate or you back down or you you know, become a floor mat for anybody. But what I am saying is that the time is now for a strategy and being strategic. Mm -hmm. I, I, I told some other day, I said, I don't think that any slave revolt happened um, and or begun with someone saying, quit messing with me, Massa. <laughs> I'm getting out of here. You keep messing with me, I'm gonna leave. You know, the bottom line is, it's like, we, we sure got a nice house here, boss, and then we out, you know? And I think that's what we have to do here. We have to figure out how to make sure our children survive in this crazy environment. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure that they have not only equipped with the ability to withstand all the, um, sure. you know, the assaults on their character and who they are, but they also have to be able to be strategic. I told my son, yeah. your teacher probably don't like you. So... <laughs> she's not going to be able to use her stereotypes against you, however. So if she thinks you don't care, you gonna sit in the front of the class. If she thinks you're not smart, you're going to raise your hand every That's every right. question. I said, you can look at it like a role in the TV show. You're just going to play the role. That's play the role right. as right. a dirty black kid. Make, you can do what you want to do, be cool happen. later. And the other piece yeah. is I'm going to be revealing. I'm going. I'm working on a strategy. And, and again, I'm not going to talk about it here. Nope, Got to come to the conference. Got to come to the conference. Really, uh, because I'm really thinking more strategically now. Because, come to the conference. Because um, things are becoming hostile. And I've said it. People who know me know that I've said that we are dangerously underestimating uh, the degree to which this is going to get uh, ugly. And I think that uh, my role, and it's important that we, again, pass the baton, but at the same time make certain that people right. can hit the tape. Yeah, in some race. Race to take. But some folks yeah. don't even know there's a race. So we got <laughs> some people don't even know that at the race. They're at they the, the race. track. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they're over there getting some chips. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's ridiculous. But we, it's ridiculous. You know, honestly, and when I talk about a, a strategy, when we when you start looking at the great migration of black folks from, from the South, and you, you try literally trying to escape Jim Crow right. seeking asylum in right. their own country. Right. So we are in, in a place where people are looking at, ah, they're taking our community, they're buying up, they're pushing us out. Buy it! <laughs> okay, now let me explain what I mean. I'm not, explain, I'm not trying to suggest that everybody has tons of money, but a lot of people come to this country with no money. They get together and they buy it. So that way you can't tell me to leave. And that requires that we, again, it's a building community. It's building trust. We get together. You know what? We can get together and buy this little duplex. Right. We can, you know, and maybe it may be a little uncomfortable for a little while, but we're on it. <laughs> but, no, but the thing you is, know, there's some things that we healing, have to start looking But at. the healing part, and this is what part that, you know, that my mom's expertise is in, is really helping people to understand that we have to see each other differently That's in order right. to be able to work together or live together or jointly come in. You have to have, be trustworthy. You have to have integrity, mm -hmm. and all of those things are essential. We can't prop up people who are shady or crooked just because they're our cousin, okay? If it's, <laughs> exactly. You, you can't. You have to start having some standards. But I think it's easier said than done when you don't know how and you haven't seen any exactly. models for how actually black people can run and establish businesses or can you know manage an apartment together or whatever in yeah. a way that has integrity. Sure. You I wanted know? to also yeah. say, give a little shout out to Yell. Um, oh, y -E -L -L. Um, yeah. y -E -L -L. And one of those, uh, this is a program where there were like how many young girls At of color? At least 400. About 400 seven. girls of color. Yeah. Uh, in today. This, today. Yeah. We were Highline there. College. Highline Community And College. what they did was, you know, the, they, the youth, we, I was talking to the youth, uh, but he was talking to the parents, and they were streaming so everybody could hear what was going on. Somebody just asked a real question saying that is the conference for parents or do you need to be an activist. It's not for activists. No, no, it's, it's for, for anyone. It's for everybody. But it's really around change. The conference yeah. is really about if you're look, interested in how, how to kind of create change, even on a family level. That's right. Um, we have we have some presenters and some tools that you will walk That's away right. with feeling empowered. Yeah. And you will in feel like lane. an activist. And in yeah. your yeah. lane, yeah. you know. But we do, in, in a way, you know, in the book, um, and the book has, of course, been revised 
now, but in the book, I talked about the fact that we can no longer be a people whose collective voice can be stilled by a single shot because yeah. there's one leader and there's right. one person. We all have to arise as leaders. We exactly. have to raise our children to be leaders. And so, you know, at this conference, it was wonderful because I had a chance. I didn't know the parents knew what I was saying to the kids, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they were streaming it, you know, right, right, right. Uh, because I wanted to have that real private conversation. And I'll tell you, one of the conversations we have to talk about is um, what's going on in terms of girls and what's right. happening with them in terms of art, artificial intelligence, Mm -hmm. All of the things that are going on, they that's we're gonna have that conversation because I'm telling you, we are out of the loop. They're suggesting that by 2030, 79% of all jobs held by human beings will be completed by robots and by technology. Can't go back to the girls' conference, so not a good digress. Conference. Conference. So I digress, but you know, that's who we are. <laughs> so, um, we I went over and spoke with the parents. And there was a sister who was really um, dedicated, working on an administrative level in a university yeah. or a school. And she was saying, she goes, you know, I'm, I'm new to the area and I'm finding it difficult to connect with other black women. You know, they don't even look at you in the eye. They don't want to talk to you. And, you know, she was saying that I'm really needing that sister connection. And so as she's talking, that, there's a whole bunch of people. And she, I said, well, where do you live? She goes, well, I live right down the street. I said, how many people live right here? All the hands went up. I said, get her number. I said, start talking to each other. They're right here. In other words, we, it's not going to happen. And she was looking, and she went, wow. And they did. They went outside. They talked. Mm -hmm. They started to connect because we need that. We need those connections. This is not a, a conference where, you know, you get a bunch of talking heads. You get the little bag and you oh, go gosh. home. You know, this is one where, honestly. And we're on the ground. It's not yeah, lofty. We're, we're doing work. We do work together. We start strategizing with folks so people can move from that point to a, a, a level of action and activity. You know, we don't want to just talk about stuff. To be talking about it. Right. We like to philosophize, but that's only late at night. That's right. We'll do that later. <laughs> we'll do that later at night. Right. We're well, watching we, movies. And we've learned from that. We've learned yeah. in, in, in this because we are really active, not just, you know, having right. conversations. We're doing work. Right. You know, I'm, I'm, trust me, I'm in communities all over the country. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm leaning in on mm -hmm. what's going on with my grandkids, what's going on with young kids, what's going on with, with women, what's going right. on with African-American men, what's deal well, how we're dealing with restorative justice. We All of those things. Though I just got back from uh, Montgomery, Alabama, having um, spent time at the, at the lynching memorial uh, mm -hmm. and the, um, you know, Legacy Museum. Everybody needs to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, 4,400 people lynched. That's mm -hmm. just the ones they had. They record record yeah, yeah. And so we, we have to begin to, to, to speak truth to power, no doubt. But we need to speak truth to each other. We yeah. have to start having, oh, having and no real conversations. conversations. I will say something. A friend of mine who shall remain nameless, last week she called me and she said, uh, you know, she has an African-American female who works underneath her who was, you know, she was asking her how she was doing if she felt like her work was challenging. And she said yes. And my friend told me she's bright star. She's moving up. My friend plans to move on from the job role she has in the next couple of years. And she was saying, I could see you taking my place, you know, when I go. She's really lifting her up, lifting her up. So then the girl started saying all these things she wanted to try to do, including co-authoring or, you know, writing, doing some writing on some, you know, as the principal investigators helping them. And my friend started to get a little threatened. So I feel like, wait a minute, she to outshine, <laughs> outshine me. So she called me and she said, you know, I was feeling some kind of way about it. And I called you because I know you give me the truth. I said, I don't know how to give it any other way, so might as well ask me. She said, so she wants to publish. I said, so? She said, but shouldn't she ask me? I said, what if she wants to work out with that guy? She got to ask you that, too? Ain't got nothing to do with her job, right? You need to, your role is to uplift her and inspire her and encourage her and not to see her as a threat because it's only you two there. You know, she's not a threat to you. She is a demonstration of our amazing yeah, ability and right. so you don't get to be the exceptional negro in the spot <laughs> you know relax and she was like okay it's like get my life I need and to see those are, back, and those are know? real conversations because we have real feelings and there's nothing wrong with being able you know to mm -hmm. process that with yeah. people but that's also the, the whole point too you know we'll, we go out sometimes we'll be sitting in a restaurant and start a conversation and you got other black folks that are going. I, listen, I'm come, I don't mean to get in. I gotta come accounts, sit but next I have to, to come you. sit to you, next to y'all so we can because they're <laughs> not used to having real conversations. We need to have that to have that space to be able to do that, right. and then it's not so esoteric that we can't yeah. even apply it to anything. Yeah. You know, so where I am right now, I guess 
But he always says, you know, I've been black. She's been black long. too long. Been she black. can't take it. <laughs> but, what, but, but what I do think is, and no, and it's good. I think it's important to be able to tell the truth. I think the strategy part, if we can recognize that we all have a certain amount of stress and how people can deal with it, is the folks who don't have as much cortisol uh, courses <laughs> well, in their veins, whatever, like ma. But that's her. She didn't raise me a whole lot of trauma, so that's I don't true. have a whole lot to freak out about when somebody acts crazy. I can silently figure out how to dismantle your whole situation. You have your moment. I'm, I, I already have moments, but I just do it internally. What, whatever. I okay. just don't tell people, call people a cow and whatnot. I have. Yes, cow. Cow is her favorite thing. Well, it, cow. I'll say other things. Oh, that's true. It could be worse. Point is, we are thinking about ways to help other people do good in their community. We have no, There's nothing invested in for in her being lofty, Dr. Joy, exactly. almost Dr. B, in a situation where we can sit and go, oh, yes, we're going we're gonna to just speak all this interesting And information. here's the other piece I want to do. Because I, 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 we have gotten to the point where we've normalized the absence of black men in our space. Yep. Okay? Yep. You know, I will have meetings for parents, and everybody in the room will be a woman. I'll go, does anybody in here think there's something wrong here? What's... <laughs> Is it just me that's <laughs> noticing? Because we've come to normalize their absence for right. whatever reason, which means that we need to make that extended, mm -hmm. you know, uh, invite. Right. I mean, really, on a lot of different levels. Right. And when I've gone and actually reached out to different uh, black men, they've gone, well, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't feel welcome in the space. If I don't have exactly. everything aligned in my life, right? Does that mean I someone going to call me out and I don't get to contribute? Right. And then we're saying, you know, if we want to make shifts and changes, we got to have everybody at the table to right. design those shifts and, and, and changes. And they know they have a right to be. Yeah. There. And so you don't have you know, to, you know how many crazy white people run stuff? <laughs> plenty <laughs> of crazy white people who run their own organizations right. that disproportionately impact our community. That's right. We don't have to be perfect to show up. That's right. You know, we, and we, show and we up. can't do that you know, with each other. And, and remember, we're modeling the behaviors for mm -hmm. our children. We're modeling for um, young black males and young black females. Right. We're modeling that behavior. And we're modeling that it's okay for, you know, one half of who we are to be not present. Mm -hmm. And and again, we have to also hold everybody accountable. This is something mm -hmm. we have to do collectively. Mm -hmm. You know, and we have to learn how to be in a space with each other. You got people, well, he dated my sister's cousin's child's <laughs> daughter, and he wasn't right. So, oh, you know. So, but, he, okay. but he, can, he probably represents a good uh, proportion of people who ain't right. So let's <laughs> bring right. him to the design table to help work right. with all these other folks. We had a community meeting one time, and we had invited some people to have a conversation about what was going on. And it was all these black men who felt like they were, that the, the, they wanted to be in their children's lives. They wanted to contribute. The, the child support was too much for them. They were embarrassed that it was too much for them. And they were disappearing out of shame and guilt. Now, that's not an excuse why you shouldn't be in your child's life. But we understand some of the circumstances sure. that are leading to something that we're calling an epidemic. And we could make some strategic shifts and welcome people back and right. say, you know, you may not have been perfect. You're committed to doing well, to doing more. Right. And we are here for you. We're here for all of that. And without us having to exalt ourselves above you, we're not above you. We're with you. You know. I see someone um, was saying, men are out here, the media is telling our story. If we don't see it in TV, we assume the brothers are not there. I know the brothers are there. I'm, you know, I, We're saying we don't see them we want to them the, to. Yeah. We want them there. We want them to show up in these, in these spaces where we're, we're making these strategic right. plans. And like when I said that there's a strategic plan, I really do. I'm right. looking at right. a whole other way to start trying to navigate systems, to navigate how our kids are in these mm -hmm. colleges and these in these traditional places where they don't feel support and right. they're not they're not finishing or completing. Right. And again, I um, that male energy is a part of who we are. Yeah. We need it. I want it. I love the brothers, and I think that we have to to start stop normalizing not working together. And I, and I think part of that also is, you know, I was talking to some girls the other day. There were some fights happening in my daughter's school, like major fights with girls. And it was becoming part of the culture. You know, I was about to snatch my daughter out just by the vicarious cortisol she was getting. Right. The, it's a fight. It's a fight. I said, oh, what, her freaking out? She didn't even fighting. Um, but what I realized was two things. One, we can't just do that. Sometimes we got to work within the structures that aren't the healthiest, right, to try to make some adjustments. Right. And I asked the little girls, I said, so... You got to think about how to have a strong constitution, I meaning you got to be able to be enough in your own spot to be able to handle people who aren't, don't have a strong constitution. I said, so somebody says to you, you know, you're ugly. I hate you. Nobody likes you. If you know that's not true, you say, okay, 
you know, I said, if I'm fighting you, then who's really the punk at the end of the day? They didn't play you like a fiddle. They got you. And I walked yeah. in, I was just, just the other day I was in, um, coming out of Target, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at two beautiful little girls. They're probably 12. He said, bring a brother with you to the conference. Bring hey, a brother to Cooper, the conference. Cooper. Bring a brother. <laughs> bring a brother. Bring a brother. <laughs> we might give you, you a discount. You can have We might give you a discount. <laughs> bring, bring, a bring a brother. Bring a brother. We're going to start to bring a brother. Right. Bring yourself. Hey, bring, bring a brother. brother. Bring your own brother. Bring your own brother. <laughs> so. So what what happened is I'm looking at these two little girls and this this little boy standing there and he's probably the same age he's going yeah she wants to fight you she's outside and the little girl's going I don't want to fight her you know but yeah no come on and so I stop and I'm going I walk over to them and I said you know you're two gorgeous clearly you know um, capable young girls are you getting ready to tell them you get ready to scrap. Right. You get ready to roll on the ground and punch somebody. And she, I mean, I guess she looked at me and she went, I don't want to do that. And I said, I know you don't. I said, and don't let him, this one right here, convince you that you should. Right. So he's right. looking at me like, all right, okay, okay. then. You know, but again, we've got to step in. we got to lean in. My, fa my kid's you know? favorite thing to say is, Mom, don't get involved. <laughs> don't get involved. I usually weigh it to see if I'm likely to get in a fight. I try to have my children close to me. But you got to interrupt things, and you can't she be either. afraid of your own kids. These little girls, I say, okay, well, I'd like to have a volunteer. And they look at me, and I go, oh, I'm sorry. You're going to volunteer. They're like, <laughs> oh, I know it wasn't a request. They want to scare these little kids. Plus, I know how to fight. Don't play me. Don't play me. If we gotta get, if we gotta get to that point, we, gotta, make, know, we can call we can up call, the quarters off. We gotta do. We gotta do. But the reality is, the end of the day, there's so many other pr more, you know, productive ways to handle our energy and to use our collective um, intelligence. And I told them, I said, unless you guys plan to grow up and be an MMA fighter, I don't see how being the, the queen fighter of this middle school is going to help you out in your future. You know, right. you don't want to go into MMA. You being the top dog at this school is not going to help you. You know, that's the reality. And Can I, we talk about getting our own coffee houses in our own neighborhoods rather than relying on Starbucks? Yes, we can. Well, and here's, there was another person that was talking about how we get this on the conference on PBS. I don't know. know. You know? Yep. Let us know. Let's think about it. That's a good that point. That would be a good, that would be, it's like unnatural causes, which is great. But, um, because if we could get some segments on there, it would be awesome. That would be great. Because we do, we need to have access to this. You know, nobody's trying to hoard the information. We don't want to hoard the information, though. But we don't want to also play with people who aren't serious. We don't have any time. And I've told people before, so long as my son, who I have to tell him he has to kind of lower his tone and recognize that people perceive him a certain kind of way if he's dressed a certain kind of way, these are all the things that they don't, they teach you not to do when you're trying to uplift your children as parents. In every parenting class, I'll tell you, you want to just encourage them to be who they are and all those good things. So long as I have to do that, something that's counter to actual good parenting in order to be a good black parent yeah, exactly. of a black child, then, I, then it's life or death for me. Sure. I don't have any kind of time for people who want to just talk about things and feel good and ohm and ashe. If you're going to do that and that's all you're going to do, do it over there. <laughs> and right. Wear your African that's clothes right. over there and do that over there. But if you want to come here and you can wear your African clothes because we love them, but be about some business. You know, we've been fooled by the dreads a couple times. That's right. Or we thought people were down because they were so right on and so uh, about us, supposedly, but don't want to roll their sleeves up for us. Don't want to patronize and, and, our and we spots. we need to play well together yeah. because I think that, once again, we're modeling. And there's something, and I talk about it in my presentations, those of you that are familiar with it, that there's, it, we know about learned helplessness. Okay? Hey, Mimi. Right? There's learned, hey. <laughs> so there's there's learned helplessness where people have so been beaten down so often. So there's a door. There's people at the door. Everybody knows if you go no, near the door, they're going to beat you down. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, you notice through time that there's no one at the door. In fact, not only is there no one at the door, the door's right. cracked. It's open. Right. But people still won't go out. So mm -hmm. that is a form of learned helplessness. Now, right, right, right. then you have something called vicarious learned helplessness. And right. that means that if I'm your champion, if, if you're the adult, if you're the leader, and you won't go through, then I'm not even going to try because I look up right. to you. You're my mentor, right? Right. right? But the other thing is also true, the opposite, and that right. is vicarious self-efficacy, right. which means that if you walk through the door, I can walk through the door too. Right. So these are things that I think we have to start considering what we are, what we are modeling, what we right. are saying is possible in our behavior for our children, not what we're saying, what we're doing. Right. Because or you, modeling can, you know how we are, oh, baby, you could be every, anything, anything you want to be. Wanna be. Like, we go, well, why aren't you? No, they go, right, right. Well, why are you here <laughs> watching <laughs> basketball wise every night? <laughs> What's right. up with that? 
So we really do have to walk the talk. I mean, be, I mean, because that's what time it is. You know, it's 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 time for us to begin um, to show up. There was a Maynard Jackson, um, who you know, first mayor Atlanta. Maynard Jackson said something to me. I'll never, I'll never forget. He says that one of the problems within the black community is you have people that that come to do good but stay to do well. Mm-hmm. In other words, they get in there and they've got all the support of the community right. and they're the right. right on people and they're there. And all of a sudden, uh, their agenda shifts to, I'm going to get mine. Oh, I'm making more money now. I don't want to. That's I was right. saying that the other day. I was like, you know, I've been in, in places where we're in the South and um, you have a cl- larger collective of people who have influence. You have political power. You have numbers, all the stuff. And people are so... Uh, reticent to, to risk anything because now they have their nice house and their cushy job and they're the one who's made the most in their family and people are looking up to them because financially they've now been able to segregate themselves from their other community members. And I'm like, we are in the Pacific Northwest. We were in the widest city in the nation and I've been able to connect with some very strategic, strong people to make some major things happen. And I'm going, we have to be able to figure out how, I'm not saying you can't have anything or that you shouldn't want to have nice things, but not to, not for your silence. And, you know, they're not going to be paying you your salary for you to be quiet and not recognize what's terrible going on. I mean, the yeah. other day we had um, we had a, the Children's Museum had a presentation of the Cucaton Dance Ensemble, my daughter's part of, was performing. And there was a young brother, well, probably middle-aged brother in the front seat, front row. And there's a lot of folks who are pretty affluent to go to these little functions, fundraisers, or whatever. And, you know, he's not even smiling at the kids. He's staring at the drummers, mugging the drummers. And I'm like, you know, it, it was, I'm, my, and the drummer was really upset. He was like, you know, you're not even looking at the kids. You're not celebrating what we're here to do. And I said, the people in the sunken place, we have no time for. Let's not even worry about him. Let's not even talk about him. You know what I'm saying? He hates himself. Let's pray for him and keep it pushing. We don't even yeah. need to have this conversation. As though He should not, rec- looking at him, you should say, you know, I'm thank God I'm not him. Thank yeah. God I am self-reflective and dedicated to these girls and supporting them and being a wonderful model and example of yeah. a, a male who is kind and com- compassionate. And, and I want to also standard. encourage people, yeah. you know, to find your lane. Mm-hmm. Do, do what you do. You know, I, I always say to folks, before I had a degree, before I did, I was always in my community doing what I could do. You know, mm-hmm. it doesn't require you to wait till you get to a space to do something. You know, there, mm-hmm. there's always been people in my community as a child growing up that did their part. They're elders. The other right. thing is not to forget those elders that are some of them are retired. They would mm-hmm. love to come and work and do and do work in the community and work together. Yeah. Everyone's seeking the connection. Everybody mm-hmm. wants a connection, but it's almost as though folks are waiting for someone else to make those connections. This is not how it's going to be. We need a community of leaders. We need everyone to step up and to start, you know, again, as com- coming together. Everything we know in terms of the data right. is that that's the healthiest thing you can do mm-hmm. is to come together. That's the first. We don't always have to, again, we aren't going to agree on everything. And we certainly can't cover everything in a, in a three-day mm-hmm. conference. No. But we certainly are going to have room and space for us to just be our authentic self. And strategize that's, about how to promote right. healing. Because healing is not just in, I mean, we want systematic healing for sure. We want systemic mm-hmm. change. But we also have to be healthy ourselves. We have not gotten to a point where we're able to, I mean, and I'm not hating on any affirmation books or any people who are talking about feel good and meditate. I'm not, about, I'm not saying anything about that. I think we need all those things. But I also think that we need to think about actually in a very, very um, almost scientific level, what's happening to us in our bodies, what's happening in our minds when we're dealing with all the stresses that we're dealing with and we don't have people around us who won delight in our success. You know, when, I, when one of my friends gets on or is doing, I'm, I, you think it's me. I'm excited for them. When I see someone doing amazing things, I'm excited for them. And people want to know where the conference is. Oh, conference is, again, June 22nd to the 24th in Princeton, New Jersey, um, at Princeton. Uh, the details are on joydegrew.com, also on her uh, Facebook page, the Joy Degrew Publications sure. page. Um, and we've had... Two other ones. We had one in Portland. And we had one in L.A. Yep. They've all been amazing and wonderful. We've met some lifelong friends and uh, made some connections. We're doing all kinds of 
stuff together. Yes. Um, we have started all kinds of ventures. The business is getting started now. These, these <laughs> people going schools, back to school. People going back to school. Lots of um, good stuff. Community organizing is happening. And someone asked a question about what happens when you get a, a whole bunch of sick people in the room <laughs> together. That you know, it's so interesting. That's not happened actually. I've we've had, never had that. We've never had happen. that experience. But we, when the, we've had a couple. We've got yeah, a couple. We've we had a couple. Few and what we do though is we don't we don't push them out. We bring them in, That's right. or we offer them an opportunity. To no, do, that's true. Did, we said, listen, this is what we're trying to do. We had a couple people come, yeah. and they want to make it the show was about them and not right. about the work. And there are people who come. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets to come. You know, the bottom line is, in our community, everybody got a strange person in the family. <laughs> everybody go, oh, Lord, I hope they feel. don't see Uncle Bart. You know, but the bottom line is, Uncle Bart's part of the family. Right. You know, and you, you realize, and what I mean by that, and I don't want to trivialize it in any way, there's, there's, People, there are people with persistent mental illness right. that have right. shown up at, our, at the conference. Yeah. Right. You know, and uh, if you understand about mental illness, it doesn't mean you're unintelligent. It doesn't mean that you don't have a degree. It doesn't mean any of those right. things right. Right. or that you're not functional. Now, right. we've learned as a family that, you know, everybody gets to be there. We have to have some boundaries around behavior. Right. But, you know, you get to show up. But I've never had like a whole room full no, of no, we don't, we don't, unless I'm actually doing unless we're in a mental health facility. In a mental health then I have. Yes, but, then, but, yeah, but, yeah. And this is the thing. Somebody was like, "How do you know when if someone who's mentally ill knows that they're mentally ill?" I mean, sometimes they never will. The good thing is that if you can convince them by saying these are the behaviors and these are the experiences, the feelings that people who suffer from these different diagnoses are experiencing, that we can lovingly encourage them to say, "Yeah, you're not. You're. It's not the devil." This sure. is, you, you have a, some chemical things going on that you can sure. actually be integrate into your own practice, your faith practice, whatever it is, and be a healthier person. You can actually do that. And sometimes those are the spaces where people will actually feel like they can let their guard down enough to express some of the things that they've been going through and suffering in silence, where we can reaffirm for them, it's okay to go and mm -hmm. get some treatment, get some service, get some therapy. It's perfectly okay, That's right. and we don't think any less of you, and we're thankful that you're telling your story. And I'm, and I'm seeing yeah. these questions, and again, some of the questions here are going to, they're, they're big questions, uh, and, and they're going to be answered, really, at, they're going to be answered at the conference. Uh, but, but again, part of the reason why we're trying to do all this is we're, we're trying to shore up ourselves and our kids and our communities and our, and our families, you know, to just, to just hold on, don't let go, don't, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Because you know sometimes it gets so hard, and we get yeah. we get tired, and we get. Uh, a young woman was saying today that you know the burnout. She yeah. says, and being in environments yeah. where you're the only one, or there's only yeah. two of you, and you know you're in these institutions, and you try to keep the lights on. You know we could yeah. talk about but the part fact of it that we have to deal with that. But we, we do can. strategy. We do strategy in the space, and, and what you're going to hear in the conference is you're going to understand. And I'm coming south, by the way. Oh. Someone asked, "Come south?" Hey, you know. Do. We will definitely um, come south. I mean, I have, a, I have a home in Georgia. So one of the conferences, uh, one of the regions is going to be south. And yeah. probably we're thinking Atlanta. I think so. I you think know, we said that. But yeah. the, the thing about it is, is, is what we, we understand that a lot of organizations can't afford to have Dr. Joy come. She's getting old. That's she's doing okay. less. And she's doing less. And you, I, as, I do a person who books her, as a person who books her, it's difficult because she goes, I don't want to do that. Even if it's a really good situation, she's like, I'm tired. She has insomnia. So, we, so just so you know, it's not because she thinks she's going to make tons and tons of money off everybody. I'm tired. It's because she only do it a couple. So we got to make them pay the rent. So in the meantime, <laughs> what we're trying to do is say that you might not be able to have her come and spend a whole day doing trainings, but you might be able to send two or three people from your organization to get some uh, content and some process for how to not only to make change in your organization, but to sustain it and continuously improve it and evaluate it, make sure that it's moving the right direction. Everybody's not going to have a Dr. Joy. I have always bring a brother. Have, I always have a Dr. Joy. I like Joy. to bring a brother. You like to bring bring your own, like bring, BYOB, bring your own brother. Bring your own brother. Bring your own brother. Bring your own brother. You know, and maybe that would be a, you know that is an incentive. You know, you pay one fee. You get a discount for bringing a, a brother. I don't know how you would verify that. <laughs> bringing a brother a picture. I don't know. We can figure it out, though. I think we can figure it out because I think you know whatever we can do to make sure that everybody gets gets here and gets this information. And it's not just like I said. We have a good, we have a good time. I mean, did, did you wobble last time? I know we did the wobble the first we, time. We, we were working. They were working it out at the at Yale. Oh, they they, today. They yeah. Don't ever don't out. Google that. There might be some. Yeah, may or may not be some twerking video. I'm just saying, on my part. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, 
you do whatever you have to do to be down with the people. That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> um, and you, and if you have skills, you know, you got to show them. So back to the conference. The conference, you're going to be able to she connect. Registered. Who registered? Somebody registered. Yay. <laughs> oh, Denise. Hey. So, yeah, no, um, I think that we're going to have a great time. Um, it, you're going to leave feeling. Webinar. Oh, 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 webinar. Okay, so we are going to be launching. Um, it probably will be in August. A series of webinars. Um, they're going to have topics. There's going to be content. There's going to be learning. And we're going to see if we can make it so that each webinar gives you a certain amount of continuing education credits especially in social work and education. So that will be something to look forward to in um, August. We'll be launching those. And Jerome also- just said improvement science. Improvement science. Yes, yeah. Jerome, yes. Um, and design thinking, yes. That's right. That's um, right. So we're gonna be talking more about that. Uh, you know, continuous- Meditation. Meditation. Oh, yep, meditation. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, Absolutely. We, we are connected to, we have a series of naturopathic physicians and um, yoga instructors and folks who are doing some amazing healing work just for the physical body, um, fitness, wellness, the how, how they go hand in hand, the, the whole idea of black women and the, the gut issues that are happening here, which is like, you know, this is where all your organs are. We gotta protect these midsections. Sure. Um, and and that's them, stress. Yeah, so and much stress. of that is related to stress. stress. And just looking at things that are not your fault, but that you can do something about, sure. you know? And so those are the things that we're all kind of trying to commit to. Um, we have a day that's mostly content. We have a day that's largely um, tangible uh, process, right? Strategy and process. And then we have a, a day of community. She's going to be doing a free um, community presentation on Sunday evening in Princeton, New Jersey. I don't have, you have to go on the website to see the, the location of the, um, of the community event. But if you have people in the Princeton, New Jersey area who haven't been able to see her or haven't been able to uh, afford to see her in the past, um, can come to that uh, community event because that's part of the service. And again, we want to yeah. make it affordable, yeah. you know, because everybody may not yes, be able nutrition to come. too. Yes, uh, but she but is again, getting old. Somebody said you're not getting old. She is. Yeah. She's she's aging beautifully. Thank God, because I look like her. <laughs> <laughs> look at the mom. Thank God. Look at the mom. Oh God. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, no, we're gonna. She is getting old though. Don't let's be clear. <laughs> she is getting old. So I'm getting old. So I know she getting old. You can't hey, be you young. Let me tell you something. Got a forty-one-year-old daughter, uh, and that means I'm old. Yeah, that does mean she's old. But you know, it's okay. Though. Melanin, I'm all right with it. Melanin then is helping us out a little That's bit. Right. All right, a little bit. Okay. So uh, anyway, we're we're really excited about people who can come participate with us. Um, we're excited for people who can join us in the webinar. Um, we're also going to talk about micro enterprise. How do you get started? How do you right. um, make connections with other people in your area? You know, there's so many people who get on because they're connected to someone. The other thing is, I want to talk some strategy around some other things That's right. um, that are, um, I may or may not be able to say about right now. But when we get in a room, we're going to keep it real real about a few things um, <laughs> and about right. how to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And I think that people, um, I was thinking about this about house, people buying a house. I was talking to a friend of mine, and she's like, I don't think I can buy a house. You know, I don't have good credit. I don't have a lot of money. I said, white people with no credit and no money, they get houses. So That's let's figure right. out how we make this happen. And so we started to figure out some, connect her with some folks with credit repair and some other things that helped her get where she needed to go. That's what we're about. Yeah. What are the connections we need to make to make sure that you can be successful? Because we definitely delight in the success of people. And the other piece that we know is that the degree to which the parents and homes are stable directly impacts the success of children and their development. I do directly get it from my mom. Connected to I do get it from my mom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think the people are coming. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> We might not be able to be here very much longer. I feel like, do you remember it was men on films? Weren't they always like snuck, they snuck in the little theaters that were like, we're going to review this piece. <laughs> what we really, what we really gonna this say. is not really our room. It's not so our room. So we, 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 we have, we've taken out a, a little restaurant. A little restaurant that before we, it's open. But there's, yeah. The country music was blaring. We're like, we don't know, but we've been here. We're not, we're in a uh, Seattle area. Doing some great work with girls. Yeah. It's been oh wonderful. my God, the girls were wonderful. Wonderful. I got to work with some parents today, and we had we had some uh, wonderful time. Got some great uh, skills that people got to have, and um, you know we are uh, we are interested in partners in developing a, a nationwide alliance. We just have to work together. So I hope that you will tune in. We're going to do a couple more of these before the conference, um, just to get you guys pumped up about what's in store. 
And uh, see, that's not the thing. I'm not leaving. We have a great talk. (laughs) It's not boring. We're not going to be talked at. We're going to learn and we're going to work together. We have a lot of interactive stuff that we do, but you're not going to go even leaving just feeling good. You're going to feel like you have some real tools tools. to make some change happen. You're going to feel like an activist. We might give you a pencil too, though. You get a book, get a a book, a pencil, get a a few things, little trinkets, but, uh, (laughs) uh, and lot, but lots of memories and lots of, lots of fun. Um, yeah, anyway, this has been really, really nice. Thank you to everybody who has tuned in. Yes. We appreciate it. And um, stay tuned for the next one. Um, right. But today, you see, we did not talk about Kanye West. Which we will not talk which about. Which we will again. not talk about now. <laughs> and next time. And next time, we, we will still not talk about, about it. him either. That's so, uh, there will be no talk. Yeah, bring some, relevant, bring some great relevant talks. Thank and um, I will keep you posted on what's happening in the future. And uh, yeah, we, 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 we got to get, get, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go home. Gotta go. Well, we got to get, get out of here. All right. Take see y'all later. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs> Just bust it out.